ですね。Cussing me out because I was sharing it to um, had to turn the Wi Fi off. My my bad, my apologies. So, uh, I'm sharing to the groups while I'm not driving so I don't get yelled at and uh, make sure I don't share to a group that don't. <laughs> I was sharing my conversations and shit that was like people selling stuff. Yeah, no, let me not go to that. I don't even know why I'm in that group. I need someone to clear out all these groups. So uh, today's video is going to be speaking on uh, dreams and regressions. I guess that's the title, right? Um, I'm going to be speaking on... I don't have a lot of time. About 30 minutes, possibly. So uh, I'll try to get this idea process as quick as I can. Hope all is well. How y'all doing? Can't really see none of y'all comments or who's up here just yet because I'm seeing things like Twin Flame Soul Journey, Sparks of Divine Light Healing, Kemet vs. Sumar, Millionaire, Majestic and Melanated, Soul Eclipse Psychic, 11-11 Movement, Voodoo Priesthood. Like, how the fuck did I get into these groups? Did I sign up for this? I'm trying to figure out how does this work. Y'all ever go through the group names that y'all attached to? <laughs> All right. I, I guess. Hold on, wait. Just share. So many. It's like so many groups. So many. So many. But, you know, I feel like this information got to get out. So, I'm almost done. I'm almost done. I have a regression in about 40 minutes. Literally, 41 minutes. So, I'm going to try to do this as fast as I can. All right, how you doing, Alex? Two Alexes, got two Alexes in the building. All right, so <clears throat> I had a dream. It was nothing deep. It was just a, just probably just a weird dream. I had a dream, all right? In the dream, I think I was doing something reckless. I mean, I'm pretty sure I was doing something reckless. I think I was stealing. So in the dream, I think I stole something, left the store, thought like I didn't get caught type situation and then I remember it was a Georgia state police I remember the police car in my dream and then the lights went off and everything and I just remember like fuck I'm about to like get pulled over and arrested for stealing because I know that's what the fuck I just did all right so process all right so at the moment that that happened you want me to tell you what I did I woke up but yo, wait, listen. I woke up. Like, woke up. Like, oh shit. Ah, it's 650, 6.56 a.m. I said, oh, okay. You know, I'm not the old Q no more. But then I thought to myself, I was like, yo, that's fucked up. Like, you just left that version of you for dead. That's what I was saying to myself. I was like, yo. I thought about it. I was like, if I just, so, so all right. You can probably look at this as like, like you would kind of represent your supreme intelligence right now because you're like articulating your intelligence as supreme. You know, you want to hold yourself to the highest state you can, hold yourself the most accountable. You want to kind of do the best you can in life. Like that's where your consciousness is right now. Like you essentially want to be supreme. You want to be divine. You want to be the best you living my best life. That's, that's where you at right now. All right. So I'm thinking, I said, damn, when I woke up, I said, did I just leave a version of me for dead? Like, okay, that's slang. Did I just leave a version of me without the intellectual means of getting out of that situation or handling that situation? That's kind of what I'm trying to say. I'm like, think about that. Like, think about these dreams. And then also, in addition to that, I said, is this also kind of like a sign, like Q, you know? Don't go into your old ways. I know you kind of been a little uh, 
anxious to just take things because you didn't like to pay for things. But you have to be a new person in 2020, 2019, whatever you want to call it. So because I also think that dream was kind of like giving me like a heads up. Like, you know, don't do nothing stupid. Eyes are on you. Makes sense. But what really fucked me up, and I never felt like that before. I was like, damn, I felt like I left a version of myself depleted. Like, without the means of surviving being pulled over by the police. Because this version of Q, this version, I've been pulled over by the police tons of times. I am, I have no issues. I'm good. How you doing, officer? I'm not worried about them pulling a gun on me, none of that. I know how to mentally keep my mind glued in with their mind. All this shit. This is a science. Okay, so I felt like, damn, I felt bad. I'm not going to lie. I felt bad. I felt bad that I left a version of myself for dead. That's it. That was with that dream. Now, y'all can apply that in whatever way y'all want. I go back and listen to my videos sometimes and be like, damn, I think of it even deeper than how I even think about it when I'm saying it at this moment, at this very moment. So I might come back to this and be like, damn, it's really deep that you kind of project yourself out in the different versions of yourself and when fear comes on or when fear comes in you kind of leave you kind of take flight hi pretty ladies pretty ladies love, i love i love pretty ladies anyway we keep moving so that's my point that if you do that in your dream state then do you do that in your awoken state when something gets hard, something gets scary, do you kind of take flight? Like, if I train my mind to do it when I'm sleeping, then what difference would it be if I'm awake? Like, do I kind of take flight sometimes? So I explain now, we can go into a deeper concept. I go into my regressions, and I find out that people actually take flight. Kind of like go to sleep. And it's not like sleeping like they're asleep. It's like they can't really express themselves. They can't talk like something else is talking through them. So now, this has happened four times now. Four different clients now have completely been subdued and kind of had another entity or deity speak or communicate through them. One, did, one being was like, because I don't like you. <laughs> my client, listen, my client's so sweet. She's like... Yes, she's like, okay, I'm, I'm seeing it. Okay, the elephant. And she's like so delicate and so nice. She's like, yes, yes, okay, yes. You know, all that, so fragile, so delicate. And then the other entity comes in. And it was like, nah, because I don't really like you. I was like, yeah, tripolar, <laughs> tripolar. <laughs> Y'all motherfuckers out here is straight tripolar. <laughs> but it's okay, we go take our time with it. Because... <laughs> I deal with a lot of stuff, man. I deal with people who've been in, you know, crazy houses, you know, have been, been mentally deemed insane. I've dealt with their minds. Their minds is pretty interesting. They still need to calm down, though. Because I'd be like, okay, so focus on the elephant. And they're like, yeah, and the elephant's spiraling. It's going down the rainbow. I see the Skittles popping out his ass. I'm like, wait, chill. Slow down. Woo. Wait. Wait a minute. Okay, I just said focus on the elephant and it dancing. Not going down rainbow shooting Skittles out his ass. I need us to focus today. This is why you're kind of going on a tangent. And what my client said was, and it was aware that it houses entities. But it says that every time she comes into me, it, he comes into me, etc., etc. It doesn't really know how to, to handle the human template. That the human template is kind of foreign to them. No shit. So, uh, so just to kind of let y'all just know about that, you know, once y'all kind of submit or take flight, fly away from something, that reptile shit, fight, flight, fornicate, and freeze, you know, I've been locked up. I went to real people jail here in Atlanta, Fulton County, where I had to almost kill a nigga with my gold teeth. Like, this is how real life got for me. So, fight or flight is a real thing. These things kind of advocate or get pushed on you or projected on you. Now, I was... 18 years old when it happened. I'm 32 years old now, so 14 years ago, you know, so of course it doesn't affect me as much as it does now. I mean, as it did then, but in essence, you know, police behind me is still a trigger. 
So, I'm going to talk about another regression, though, that was kind of interesting. So, I did my client pop forward an elephant. I'm called kind of, you know, be vague, though. And um, the elephant, you know, it's like I was, I'm, you know, a part of you. So, I'm like, okay, well, I want you to ask this elephant, what part of you would it be? And the elephant was like, I'm in your feet. And I said, feet, yes, feet would be like your root chakra. So I said, okay, so this elephant is in your root. I said, okay, so we need to figure out how this elephant got there. Did you put it there? Or was it sent? Sent, instantly. I said, oh, okay, well, how old were you when this energy was sent? She said, four. I said, can you recall anything that has happened to you when you were four? That could have or would have uh, placed something foreign in you. No, not that I can remember. So then, you know, I kind of like work, you know, my magic. I can't really tell y'all all the details. But we end up finding out that uh, this entity was placed in, in her when she was forward through a, a form of molestation. We ended up finding out. Now, she completely forgot about this. None of this was remembered. But we ended up finding out that her... Her father's friend molested her when she was four. And that the friend actually just recently was pushed away or separated recently. Out of all that time that has passed, recently has been pushed away because that same friend made a pass at her mom. So that's interesting, you know, like mother, like daughter. But uh, that, that issue or that trauma, let's call it that, uh, kind of then placed uh, a deity or being in her root chakra that was then producing fear. Now, what this means, or what this kind of reflects, is that her root chakra or her feet is kind of how you get emotion, how you kind of transverse self. So as you transverse self, she was kind of like walking, Walk like a man, talk like a man, kind of walking and talking in fear. And this is what it was kind of simulating, that she was really being capped, restricted, held back, because uh, this entity or being that was placed on her or in her at four years old was producing a level of fear within her body. And she wasn't able to move past her fear. But that deity or entity is a being or consciousness that actually was projecting fear upon itself. So I had to let her be the source of its comfort and not the source of its fear. Because you are the source of these beings. And it is your energy, energy, your spark that's kind of fueling them or lighting them, little lantern. See, I don't think y'all pro fully, fully process. These are dead beings that dwell within darkness and are kind of using your light or your flame to kind of move forward, to kind of get to a destination or point in time. So, uh, well, you don't need to know what I'm talking about. Your subconscious does. That's the beauty of my words. See... A lot of people say, I can't really listen to you too often because as soon as I listen, I get a lot of downloads. True, join my world. And uh, as you kind of listen to certain things I say, they kind of unlock certain things because I'm not just talking to you. I'm talking to all the cells within you. I'm talking to all the ancestors that reside within your blood, the ones that you don't want to acknowledge, the ones that you kind of shit out any chance you get. So it ain't really a, uh, a matter of uh, listening. It's a matter of absorption. And if you dialed in, then you absorb it. Love. Nice to have you, though. So, uh... So that was it. I mean, I could talk about a lot of regressions. I just did a regression. The whole... My whole client broke down in complete... And I'm not really an emotional person, so I'm not even gonna lie, it kind of be throwing me off. You know, I kind of had like that Vulcan shit in me. And, uh, well, you kind of like, someone could be bawling right in front of you and you kind of like this. It's not like I don't care. It's just, uh, how we got here was through seven sparks of emotion. You can call those chakras. 
and uh, those seven sparks of emotion are still condensed in one being. So uh, those seven chakras kind of live through you, through your expressions, frowns, smiles, tears, sex, you know, <laughs> releasing of these expressions. So if you don't really want these micro systems or microorganisms controlling you, then you don't really express oneself through emotion. I'm just trying to help you understand what the Vulcan race is about. But I come from that, so it's hard for me to kind of, you know, I have both parts. It's either all in or I don't give a fuck. So, like, I don't know how to articulate that in words, but it's hard for me to, like, react to a person crying. It doesn't mean I don't care. It doesn't mean I don't feel it. It's just hard for me to react to those type of emotions. But, um, needless to say, I still help them. <laughs> I bring emotions. See, this is what I this is what I don't think people understand. Like, like Lucifer is a title. You say that you're a Lucifer, then you better be ready to ingest what comes with that. A Lucifer is a light bearer, meaning that someone would be in darkness if they're around you. And if they're in darkness, that means that they're unaware of something. And if you are a Lucifer or a light bearer, then you're bringing a level of light to a dark situation. So I took acid. I was on acid with my, my ex. She was sucking her finger. She always like sucked her finger weirdly during like times we did drugs. And I remember I pulled her finger out of her mouth, popped it out, and it sparked so many emotions. She freaked out. She's like, oh my God, oh my God. I started freaking out. And she realized that the reason why she sucked her thumb was, you know, it was the thing that she used to do when she was a child. And that her aunt would suck or yank her finger out her mouth. And it created like a level of trauma to her that she didn't even remember. That didn't even, like she had a hatred towards her aunt and could not even remember where the hatred came from. And when we were on acid and I pulled her finger out her mouth, it triggered that memory. And then that memory allowed her to kind of have a level of light or information to that situation. She then kind of understood why she had anger towards her aunt. I was on Salvia with another one of my friends, and um, he remembered being a, a part of a, a government project in Nigeria where his father was the head of the military there, and his mother would always say in their adulthood that she felt like there was a spell over them when they were younger, and that you know she had to do something about it. So when he was on Salvia around me, he was able to remember or recall why they fled or left Nigeria. And that they fled or left Nigeria, according to him, is because their father was a warlock and was producing spells on them. And that the mother had to kind of fled or get away. All these things are kind of like lights, kind of like sparking certain ideas or illuminations that come from you being around. Some people say, oh, you're bad luck. Is luck good or bad? What Alex say? Alex said, uh, how do you know if you're dealing with your own emotions or someone else's? Well, well, you're right, in a path. Well, first off, you gotta realize when you say the word empath, you're symbolizing you being in a path or trajectory or motion. Whose motion or path are you in right now? I'm in the motion or path of a fucking highway right now. I didn't build this shit. So whose path am I in right now? Whose, whose system am I using on this path right now? I didn't build this car. This is deep things. You're in a system of time right now. You're in a path of time. Whose time are you in? Saturn's time? Isn't Saturn known as Kronos? Are you in a deity known as Kronos? Are you in his time? Everyone says, oh my God, I can never imagine how everything is so connected. That sounds like a brain, does it not? Isn't the brain a neural network all connected? Sending out waves or ways, ways, get it, ways, directions for your arm, leg, leg, arm, head, your Allah, your God. I mean, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I'm going on a tangent. That's how I think. So... It's just important for y'all to realize that uh, you kind of put yourself in situations. 
You don't have to feel everybody. You can cook food at home. But you choose to go to a restaurant. So then you have to deal with what happens when you go to a restaurant. You're dealing with emotions, experiences, people. Stay your ass home and cook. If you don't want to be a strong empath. If you want to not use the gifts that help you actually really feel a motherfucker. Because words is only 7% of communication. 7. 7%. 93% of communication is done without words. I know about that. A little, you know, a little wink. A little lick of the lips. You know. <laughs> you can kind of communicate in many ways. I'll bag your bitch and won't even say no words. You know, just put an idea to things. I'm not saying me personally. Just get it. Get what I'm saying. You know, why they say these words, why people are so confident. They kind of know themselves. There's people who go to school to kind of learn how to manipulate people. It's called hypnotists. They go to school to learn to manipulate people. I've never went to school a day in my life to do hypnosis. So I think like, damn, if I'm able to put four people out, uh, boom, sleep, gone, out of it. Like, cute, what just happened? That kind of situation. Imagine people who have the fucking, who went to school for this. Who actually, this is their shit. You know? Go to the club and pop a motherfucker on their head. And, you know, they be out. You, She's drunk. <laughs> Don't worry, she just drunk too much. No, nigga, she didn't drink anything. What are you talking about? You done hit her with the... Popped her on her head. And now you dragging her out the club. Like, it's some crazy stuff we're dealing with in the life. And I'm trying to help y'all become aware of it. Y'all could be mad at me the way I do it. I get it. I'm not, I'm not a saint. <laughs> I'm not perfect. This is how I like expressing myself. I don't cap myself for anyone. But just want y'all to like grasp We're dealing with, with principalities And principalities is deeper than a goddamn thought The thought is the teacher, is it not? But then there's a, something that's kind of governing that thought You call that a principle We're dealing with principalities And principalities have placed themselves in what you call Dramatic or geometric shapes And I'm kind of chill on that note. Yeah, she said like the eye contact between men who seek men. Uh, yeah, that shit is. I'm not even go really. That's not on. Um, that's not for me to speak on. But um, the problem is women don't want to use a certain aspect of themselves. They think that shaking their ass and getting ass shots is the wave of getting men nowadays. Not realizing that just a subtle wink goes a long way. So because women don't want to use the divine goddess in themselves, then the divine goddess had to go somewhere else. Hey. <laughs> Woo. You know, unfortunately, we live in a real complicated world. <laughs> oh, man. <clears throat> Y'all vessel is both masculine and feminine. It's masculine because the uh, spirit or sperm that animated your ass came from a male. <laughs> so you are animated by a male agenda. Thus, you are operating or moving in an Allah frequency. Allah, you know, he's a man. Arm, leg, leg, arm, head. You kind of moving in the agenda of a man, but the man can't do shit itself. So it kind of needs an egg or a body. So it's the body of a female that's allowing the man to kind of express itself. Is that not the story of Tina Turner and Ike? Ike was a fucking nobody. Kind of had to use the body of Tina for it to kind of get into a position or space of equality. <sighs> What's love got to do with it? We are spirit. Oh, Lord Jesus. <laughs> I don't even know what that means. But uh, we are house spirits. I'll tell you that. <clears throat> and a spirit is an idea. No different than an identity. Your identity is an idea. 
I'm aware that we're 75% water. And spirits use liquid to travel. So the most efficient way of uh, controlling spirits is by placing them in streams. <laughs> and then you can stream the spirit on your station. <laughs> I'm, so, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <sighs> We just left the age of Pisces. You streaming upstream or downstream? Are you streaming up or are you streaming down? Which way is up? <laughs> I can float sometimes when I'm out because of how seductive I can be. Yeah. Ones that kind of activated their star can then uh, allow one star to start ascending again. Rhonda said uh, she's a fallen star. And you can't really rise without falling. If not, you kind of just, you know, stagnant. Not in any trajectory at all. You're not risen or falling. But like I said, which way is up? Y'all say y'all falling, does that mean you going up? <laughs> like I said, when you deal with those hallways, you only kind of pay attention to one door, that right one. Not realizing that there's another door behind you. <clears throat> I'm about to be home, so this live's about to end in about two minutes. So I don't know if y'all have any other questions, comments, or concerns. Those that just joined video will be uploaded it'll be saved thank y'all for tuning in i do have a regression session i have to start in about 10 minutes so i'm about to go smoke a bowl kind of uh get me in calm collect spirits <laughs> one of my clients was like how do you just deal with these spirits so well like that i'm so scared they come with horns and scales and i done challenged every goddamn spirit out there and it was the very simple concept. If you really bought that life and feel that you have the authority to combat or challenge me, come forward in physical form. I'm not fucking scared. I don't give a fuck what you look like. No. Nope. Heckler, horns, gargoyle, ghoul, goblin, fucking whatever. All right? If you really feel that you are in a good enough space in your life, then physically pop the fuck up. Because I'm physically popping the fuck up in your space. I'm all up in y'all space. That's how I got here. That's how I know about you right now. I done popped up in your shit. Whether it's a goddamn castle, whether you in a goddamn foot and ankle, you know, I done popped up in your space. So I'm trying to figure out how do you think I'm going to give you any greater authority than myself when you ain't doing the same shit I'm doing. I'm popping up in your space. When are you going to pop up in mine? Hmm. Hit him with the hit him with the Uzi. You know how Uzi be doing a little femi feminine shoulder shrug? And just, you know, hit him with the Uzi. I don't know. Makes sense to me. <clears throat> we have a responsibility to live according to the position given unto us. What was our position? Your position is talking about where you were born in space, the star system you come from. That's your position. So, of course, you have a responsibility to the position of space you come from. That's your zodiac sign. How many of y'all operating off y'all zodiac signs? A lot of y'all are. A lot of y'all are into astrology. So, I think we're handling our responsibilities. Are we not? Mm. Tony Allen. What's good, bro? Can the client smoke before the regression? I smoke before the regression. I'll be, I'll be, how I'm going to tell you not to do some shit I'm doing? I'm smoking. So I'm smoking probably during the regression. I'm just being honest. So, yeah. Why would I try to cap you? I'll be messed up. I've been practicing mentalism techniques so I can help others with their issues too. You on point. I love that. Thank you, Quentin. It's always a pleasure to hear you speak. Thank you, love. 
uh, Rhonda said you have a call, follow it, but you are, you think, you are who you think you are, Gemini, no, short but sweet, Brandy, alright, I'm out, appreciate you guys for tuning in.